Oh, he might be calling in, guys. We've got somebody screening. I love this auto detector card wind song, Pennsylvania state election. Hold on just a minute, caller. We'll get you in. Welcome. You're live on the air. Can you hear me? Yeah. How you doing, man? It's hard wooden sock. You know, that, that auto. Oh dude, I figured it was. It just always cracks me up. Yeah, it was, only, it was a little wrong there in that case. Am I coming through all right? Yeah, you're coming through fine. You might want to mute the stream in the background if you haven't already. Just listen to the phone. It makes it easier for you. Yeah, I got you, Bob. But I appreciate you calling in, man. What you got all to right. say? So I feel like you're misrepresenting my argument in a really big way. So I'm not for making things harder for Americans. I'm for more making sure that even if that is a point, oh, what what was it? What did you say? A point nine percent fraud or whatever? Point zero. Make sure that that. Hold on. Point zero, 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 nine percent chance of election fraud. I was in the middle of typing, so I didn't, <laughs> I didn't hear that. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, but in regards to Pennsylvania, like the Georgia, the Georgia thing, I think that there are some good things actually that they're doing. But for instance, the misdemeanor water bottle thing is just a horrible idea. And yeah, it's ridiculous. That makes no sense to me. Uh, like <laughs> I completely understand that point. Like I'm, like that's stupid, but because. Obviously, mainly in cities and stuff, there is a longer voting line, whatever. But correct. in regards to what happened here in Pennsylvania, um, what happened last, uh, what was it, 2019? I believe that the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, the Pennsylvania Congress passed a, um, like, no excuses mail-in voting, right? Correct. That's but my understanding as well. It, but it never actually went through the full process in that's laid out in our constitution, you know, and I'm not saying that it would have changed that it would have changed the election. Like that's, that's not what I'm going for here, (laughs) you know, but I think that we have, you know, a constitution that we have to follow. Right. And when it's not followed, it's reasonable for people uh, that voted for the losing side to point this out and be like, this is fraud and this is messed up and whatever, right? Okay, so I'm going to pause you for just a second. You're using the word fraud. Can you understand how to me that implies that you're like saying, hold, you know, hey, there was fraudulent ballots in this election? Like, I see how you, you're trying to put that opinion on me, but I don't. I'm not think, trying to put the opinion on you. Some because, I'm asking you if you yeah, can understand why, think, from my point of view, it comes across that way. Yeah, I can understand that. But okay. I, that's why I called in. So, because typing over chat, it would take forever to get that point across. Exactly. And that's why I've got a toll free line for anybody who disagrees with me or agrees with me, and conservative callers get priority, brother. I'm not trying to misrepresent anybody yeah. here. But when you're talking about, I mean, there were Republicans in the state legislature in Pennsylvania, correct? Yeah, it was it was actually the Republicans that passed Prop 217 in 2019. Okay, so Republicans passed the bill that expanded mail in voting to everybody. Correct. Okay, and were you out protesting and going against this at the time when it passed? No, because I honestly didn't even know anything about it. Okay. You know, like it w- no one, it wasn't on the news here. It, there was nothing. Okay. So from my point of view, from the outside, I'm just asking you if you can see my point of view on this, right? Nobody started screaming about this bill that Republicans passed until Republicans lost. And now y'all are calling it fraud. Do you see how that looks ridiculous from um, the outside? 
and like I'm not calling it fraud. You know, I I think that it is. They passed the bill that didn't go through the proper channels to get fully approved, but they implemented it anyway. Because it was actually due to be on referendum. It was supposed to be on referendum in 2020, okay. but it wasn't. They had already enacted the changes. And do you think you know, some exception like, should have for- been made for that? Because, you know, we were in the middle of a global pandemic and everybody was scrambling to try and make sure we had a you know free, fair and safe election without, you know, causing of course. tens and hundreds of thousands of deaths from spreading the coronavirus. Of course, I like and I understand that point of view as well. But then you have, for instance, Dr. Burke and Dr. Fauci come out and say that voting is perfectly safe if social distancing was was met, if social distancing measures were met. But I mean, not, that's neither here nor there, but it, it doesn't matter because we have a constitution for a reason and to circumvent the constitution just because of a global pandemic, I don't see how that is acceptable. I don't see how the constitution, and again, we're talking about the Pennsylvania state constitution. I just want to clarify for anybody jumping in the stream here. I don't see how that it was, you know, circumvented. I mean, that, that like implies some sort of nefarious intent to get around the rules to. And I just want to remind everybody that again, by, by your point of view, you know, that the Republican state legislature is who passed this in 2019, right? These were your side's representatives that passed this and your side didn't complain at the time. They only started complaining once they lost. And I, I appreciate you no longer throwing the word fraud in there. I think you and I both agree that this is not fraud, right? I don't see it being circumvention either. I don't see any nefarious intent to get around rules here. I see a bunch of people trying to do the best they can in the middle of a pandemic to keep people from infecting each other. Okay. Maybe I'm using the wrong word of circumvention, but because I don't think that it was intentional to like, I don't think there was any ill will behind changing the law. If that makes sense. Um, And I don't think that, anything fraudulent happened because the law changed. Um, I think that like I very, I value the constitution obviously greatly. I guess I'm sort of a constitutionalist, but so when our constitution isn't being followed, you know, I feel some sort of way, if that makes sense. No, I can understand that. that, I think that the changes that happened to our election should have been more well communicated to the people of Pennsylvania, because like that didn't happen here. Would it be fair to say that the, from, from your point of view, because I'm assuming you live in Pennsylvania. Correct. Okay. So I don't, obviously, I mean, full disclosure here, right? But would it be fair from your point of view to say that the, (laughs) the changes were communicated equally to both sides? Like there wasn't like Republicans just trying to, you know, tell Republicans and hide it from Democrats and vice versa? No, I think it was just like, no one gave us the information at all. Both sides. Okay. So it it was communicated equally though, would be my point, right? Both sides either did yeah, or didn't know. Equally poorly. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to yeah, argue it, whether it was, it was poor or in favor. It was just equal. So, again, that's, you know, the neither yeah. side was trying to game it. I don't know. I mean, from where I'm sitting, okay, even if I agreed with your position, okay, that, that, that this bothered me, right, I could see that people were trying to do the best they could during a pandemic, that there was nothing nefarious that it was passed by my conservative, you know, Republican party, if I was on your side, that there was no fraud involved and that you didn't see any increase in fraud, which I think I heard you allude to, right, as a result of this change. If I wanted to reverse that change, I don't know why I would want to reverse that change. I might want, I might want the referendum on it still to, to confirm it, but I don't see why I would want to revert that unless I just wanted less people voting. Of course. And like, that, that's what I mean. I'm not trying to reverse the change. I would, I want it to go to referendum in 2022. And if the voters 
in Pennsylvania, like shut it down. Well, then obviously it goes back to the way it was now. You know, personally, I don't know how I feel about it. I, I want to do more research about it, but my whole issue with it was that refer like that the referendum was skipped. If that makes sense. No, that does. But none of that's fraud. None of that's ill intent. Right. And in terms of, Correct. if you and I agree at a fundamental level that, you know, Americans in democracy should be able to vote. Like that's a fundamental right in any democracy. Right. Then I don't see why you would be opposed to this when you've already said that you didn't see any increased fraud from it either. Correct. Yeah. I, but you know, I mean, like, I, I don't know how I'm going to vote in 2022. I would probably actually vote for the, the vote, uh, the mail-in voting um, expansion. Well, I would appreciate that because like I said, I want to make it easier for everybody to vote as long as they're, you know, legal citizens and, you know, et cetera. And you're seeing the same thing I have by your own admission that there was no increase in fraud, right? You might've had one here, one there, just like we always do, but there's nothing that's like massively historically upsetting. No. And of course the the ones that get televised are the Republicans that do it because the Republicans do it too. Yeah. I mean, both sides do it. Yeah, I'm not going to sit here and act like the Republicans are holy, you know. <laughs> but when both sides do it, it's it's such a small degree and so historically ineffective that it's pointless. Like I said, if 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 you and I are sitting, you know, let's say we're next door neighbors, right? You and I are next door neighbors, right? And we're both going to cast our votes by mail, right? It is more likely that you're going to get struck by lightning than it is that you're going to cast a fake ballot. And the same is true for me. So why the hell would I want to make it more difficult for Americans to vote based off of that? Right. I'm not running around saying, hey, we need to elect light or, you know, erect lightning rods everywhere. So that way we can protect voters (laughs) on the way to the polls. And this is why I said to me, this is a bunch of solutions in search of a problem. Like nobody has shown that the problem actually exists. Of course. No, like I, I'm actually in agreement with you there. Okay. But, um, you, you know, like I agree that in this election, you know, I'm not one of those fuck. You know, sorry, I don't know if there's cursing a lot on your shit. Nah, street. dude, you can say um, whatever the fuck I'm you want. I'm not one of those. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I, I'm not one of those like fucking crazy conspiracy theorists, you know. Thank you. Um, which now they're coming out that they're like, oh, it's it's a fake, you know, like oh, there was there was never actually any fraud. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, like, we didn't mean all I, that crazy stuff we said. Yeah, like I'm not subscribed to any of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, now, like I do, I'll, I also disagree with you with in regards to ID. You know, I know that there's a difference between voter ID and you know just using a state issued ID. Mm-hmm. Um, personally. And I agree with you, like, um, with state IDs should be free. Let me, let me pause you for just a second. Scrub Lord 1963. Why do you have the constitution as a backdrop? Dems use it for toilet paper. Republicans aren't much better. Um, I signed up to protect and defend this constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I don't use it for toilet paper. If you need to speak for yourself, speak for yourself, but don't project your views onto anybody else. At least come in and, you know, have a conversation and learn to talk back and forth civilly, and then we can have some kind of conversation. But if you're just coming in to be a meme lord, edge lord, and have nothing productive or substantive to contribute, then there's no point in you being here, brother. This isn't like a meme chat. I'm not going to, you know, jump up and down or dance or anything like that. So you're in the wrong location. Um, we're having a serious conversation right now. You're welcome to jump in if you want to. Sorry for the interruption there. No, you're good, man. You know, I, you know, I hate people that can't have civil conversations, like because that's what I'm all about. Exactly. You know, I, I mean, like both sides are equally terrible at it. Well, you can't you can't learn or educate if you can't have a civil conversation, right? I'm sure there's some things I could learn from you, and there's some things you could learn from me, right? But if we're just going to scream at each other and try to, you know meme each other into we're not accomplishing anything. Nobody gets any better. If we want to make this country better again, we want to make America great again. Like so many conservatives say they want to do, we need to learn how to have civil conversations with each other again. 
Of course. I, I completely agree with you, <laughs> which is why I called in. Well, I appreciate you calling in. But I, I was sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your point. You were going ahead and saying you disagreed with my take on state voter IDs and voter IDs in general? Correct. So, you know, I, I understand that there's a difference between voter ID and just a state issued ID. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like a voter ID has to go through like different channels, I believe, correct? It depends. Basically, the short version is anytime somebody's talking about voter ID, they're saying that they're going to make it okay for certain forms of ID to be acceptable at the polls and other forms to not be acceptable. So like in Texas, when they passed this, they said you got to have ID to vote, period, full stop. Right. They may have had a, you know, you can sign an affidavit and have like three witnesses type exception. But basically, the rule was you had to have some form of ID to vote and be acceptable. Um, now the problem with that is what forms of ID are we going to allow? Right. So in Texas, if you had a military ID, you were good. If you had a concealed carry weapons permit, you were good. Those were acceptable. Even if you didn't have a driver's license or state ID. Okay. However, if you had a student ID, right, that was unacceptable. And if you had a state employee ID, like you worked for the state of Texas, that was unacceptable. Well, call me crazy, but concealed carry weapon permits, folks, the people that are likely to have that form of ID just happen also to be more likely to vote Republican. Whereas we know that young people, college students, right? And college educated, again, the people that would have student IDs, right? Are more likely to vote Democrat. So when you're getting rid of two, when one picture form of ID is okay and the other forms not, and they just happen to always align with party lines, this is a problem. And this is not the first time we've dealt with this historically. North Carolina did this shit too. They went and figured out who was voting and how after all of a sudden a bunch of, they they passed some laws that said, you know, basically increased uh, minority turnout in North Carolina. And then they went and requested data by race, like to figure out who used what IDs, right? And if it just happened to be an ID that black people used more, then all of a sudden that form of ID you couldn't use anymore. is over. Thank you, Play90 Scott. I appreciate the follow. Like I said, on its face, yeah. it's not a huge problem. Like I could understand the concept, right? Like I'm worried about people showing up and pretending to be Bob Smith and voting for, you know, more Democrats or voting for more Republicans. The problem is every time it's implemented, every single time they implement this shit, they use it to restrict people who are going to vote against them every time. Okay. Um, so I guess we might we might actually agree somewhat here um like obviously i agree with you know those specific forms of id aren't well i would say that none of them are good enough Mm -hmm. you know i would say that any well except maybe like the texas state um the state workers yeah the state employee id you work for the state i yeah, I could see that as being acceptable, but I, I don't see a student ID being acceptable or um, a concealed carry being acceptable or I guess a military ID I would accept as well. So, yeah, um, I, honestly, I would be fine with pretty much any of them. I mean, they're all verified by a third party institution. They got your photo on them, all that kind of stuff. But all of it boils back down to, right, you're asking me to implement something that makes it harder for Americans to vote based off something that is less likely than them being struck by lightning, right? You haven't proven that there's a problem yet, right? It's like if I said, hey, I want to build a dome around the country because, you know, aliens are coming in and voting, like from outer space, right? I can point to all the ways we could build this dome that would stop the problem, but I haven't shown that it's really a problem yet. And until you can point out where it's actually a problem, you're going to be really... you're asking me to make it harder for somebody to exercise a fundamental right, a fundamental right in any, any democracy. And we can't even show that we need to. That's, that's where the stop, that, that, that's where you lose me, like right off the start, right? Yeah, well, I mean, in general, the government tends to make a bunch of laws and legislations that they don't really need to, right? Mm, I don't know that I agree with that, but I, I, I mean, you can get me on board with like, <laughs> there's some, there's some laws that have unintended consequences or that have been on the books too long or all that kind of stuff. 
right? But you're not going to get me oh, on board yeah. with, hey, we're just going to make extra regulations for no reasons. And I mean, hell, if you're the small government conservative, you should be with me on this, right? There's no problem here that we can find. Why the hell would we want to make it more restricted by the government? Because I think that it would eliminate any of the issues that did arise after the 2020 election. You haven't so shown like, that there are any issues, it, though. No, 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 no. I, I know, I, I know that there's no. I know that there were no major issues in this last election. Okay. But what I'm saying is, it it would prevent any of this conspiracy stuff from bubbling up. Would it? Well, in in my opinion, it would, you know, because when if every if federally, like every state had, you know, you had to use a state issued ID, right? Just across the board, you had to have a state issued ID, okay? Um, which I think they should be free. You know, I agree with you there. <laughs> um, then if your side loses and everyone had to use a state issued ID. Well, you can't come up with some conspiracy that there was fraud. You know what I mean? Do you think so they can not have this huge? I mean, brother, I mean, they were just find a way. Yeah. I mean, look at, look at the <laughs> shit. They'll find a way. Yeah. Look at the shit in Georgia, right? You had the, you know, dominion or they were switching votes between Trump and Biden. Right. And then Dominion was dumping a whole bunch of extra votes into the system somehow. And then you did, you know, two computer count audits and one hand count audit, none of which found extra ballots than there were voters. Right. And none of which like showed it going from like sl sliding from one person to the next. But people still fucking believe it anyway. Right. I, I guess, again, no, man, until well, we can man. show that it's a real problem. Right. I'm not going to like infringe on other people's other American citizens rights, like fundamental basic right to vote just to make somebody that's crazy feel more comfortable. I mean, you, are, are, are you a second a guy? Are you like, like a gun owner? Oh yeah. I'm a big, I'm a big two a guy. <laughs> okay. So there's a lot of people that don't know jack shit about guns on my side, right? Should I make it a whole lot more difficult yeah. for you to own any firearm whatsoever, just because it would make them feel better? Mm, see, I'm actually in agreement with universal background checks. No, I'm saying um, like we're going to just take it uh, away because it makes them feel better. Well, no, that, that's just dumb. Like, I mean, I'm not talking about taking away people's rights, you know. And a lot of cases you <laughs> are. I mean, when it was implemented in Georgia, I mean, they purged 53,000 people off the ballots when they when they uh, enacted one of their voter match registration rules when uh, the governor of Georgia was the secretary of state. 53,000 names just poof like that off the voter rolls, and 70% of them just happened to be black. Of course. And, I mean, that is something I completely don't subscribe to. And you this know, is what I'm I saying I on its face. And, and I know you wouldn't, right? Most reasonable Americans wouldn't. And again, I assume you jumped in in the middle of the episode, but I said at the beginning, you know, most I used to be conservative. Most conservatives and I agree. And I find that most, you know, anecdotally conservatives I talk to agree with, you know, hey, we want to be fair to everybody as fair as we can. And we want to follow some common sense rules, right? I'm fine with that. But every time this shit gets implemented by Republican legislatures, they don't do it. There's no reason why, you know, yeah. if I purge 50,000 names, 70% of them should just happen to be black. I mean, come on, really? Well, I mean, I don't agree to that at all, you know. <laughs> like, exactly, but they're well, that, using that's, you to get this shit in up, place. Of course. And so I guess the question I'm going to, like, throw at you yeah. Um, is like, if, you know, it was, you know, strictly just state issued ID, right? Like driver's license or just state issued, you know, personal identification card, mm -hmm. right? And that was required to vote. Isn't that similar to universal background checks? Yes and no, because I can prove that we have a unique problem in this country as compared to the rest of the world with firearms violence. 
whereas you can't well, prove we that we like, have an election fraud issue. Right? I'm not talking about okay. how people feel about guns, right? These people aren't imagining that we have tons of mass shootings and that we have higher suicide rates compared to other countries and we have higher gun violence compared to other countries. And again, I'm assuming you jumped in at the point where you realize that I'm pretty pro-gun because I'm in favor of universal background checks and a little bit further restrictions than that, right? But that's the difference. I can point to real harm this is doing and compare it to other countries and say, okay, yeah, you know, we seem to have a, a problem here that we should address, right? And I'm fine with compromising with you on that. But you're not pointing to that we have a real problem with election fraud. You're just wanting me to make people feel better when you and I have both admitted that they're, you know, conspiracy theory nuts. I'm not going to cater to them. I can't. If I start catering to people based off stuff that's not based in reality, what's next? I start, you know, uh, uh, looking for the Jewish space lasers that the, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene, the congresswoman, <laughs> you know, thinks exist. Am I supposed to pass laws yeah, against yeah, that too? too? <laughs> yeah, she's absolutely well, nuts. She's whack too. <laughs> Like I don't, I don't subscribe to her either. I know, <laughs> you know? And, and, you know, and and you're not the you're not the Republican I have a problem with, man. The one that I have a problem with is the fact that only five percent of the Republicans in Congress voted to remove her from her committee. Ninety four and a half percent voted to leave her on her committee. They were okay with Jewish space laser girl representing the Republican Party on the department or on the education committee. I'm not okay uh, see, with with I have, compromising with fantasies, man. See, I, I have I have mixed feelings about this though, um, because while yes, she's crazy, you know, um, she was elected into office in her district. Yeah, right, representing her district. So if we vote to kick her out of committees, you know, committees, I, I guess I, I'm kind of okay with, but if we vote to remove her from the house, right, then all those people's voices aren't being heard. You so know, you send it, you, you send her ass back and you say, sorry guys, try again. She's not based in reality. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's not acceptable. It is. It's already, it, it, it's in there. Congress doesn't have to seat her ass. But, but she still has to represent those people. She doesn't have they, to. She was voted in to represent that district. She was voted in to represent that district, and the Congress can say, I'm sorry, you're too fucking batshit crazy, and send them back and say, Georgia, try again. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I just don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I don't agree with her at all. You know what I mean? No, I get like, it. I, I, just feel like, I just feel like she was voted in by her representative by, by her constituents and you know as crazy as it might be like we, we have to you know not necessarily listen to her but she has a right to be present at the house if that makes sense i can understand where you're coming from i just fundamentally disagree but then we're back to kind of the root of our disagreement right she's talking she's advocating for shit that's based in fantasy and i can't compromise with that I'm not going to make, you know, compromises to, to make the Jewish space laser conspiracy theorist feel better. Just like I'm not willing to make compromises and ask other American taxpaying citizens to make it more difficult for them to vote because conspiracy theorists think that there's all this election fraud going on. Until either one of them can point to a real demonstrable evidence-based problem, right, I'm not going to inflict other American citizens with issues or with difficulties to try and remedy a made up problem. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think we're just going to like agree to disagree. Like at the end of the day on this one, you know, like I agree that the stipulations that a bunch of these states have are, you know, disproportionately hurting certain communities Okay, where it shouldn't be like that. Um, you know, whereas I would be on board if it was, hey, you need a state issued ID. That's it. You know, that's the only acceptable ID. And then I would get on board with it. Don't we already do that you with know, voter registration? Gonna, what's that? 
I said, don't you basically already do that when you register to vote? I don't know how most states work, but yeah, here in Pennsylvania, you register to vote when you get your ID. Yeah. And that's basically one of the provisions of HR one is right. You know, automatic voter registration in a lot of these different scenarios, right? Expanded mail-in voting, you know, no excuse mail-in voting. And you've already admitted that you don't have a, a, a problem with, you know, mail-in voting on its face. You just had a complaint about the process, but you could understand that it wasn't nefarious and wasn't fraud, right? So if we did this nationwide, I don't see why this is an issue, right? You've already conceded that there wasn't, you know, neither one, neither you nor me is, you know, buying this big conspiracy that there were all these fake ballots mailed in and all that kind of shit, right? Um Campaign finance reform, knowing where all the money that's coming into all these, you know, not for profits that are running all these attack ads before the elections. I imagine you and I would find common ground there as well. I don't think we actually agree to disagree on all that much. I think we agree on a lot of the individual policy procedures that that we're putting into place. I think where we fundamentally are disagreeing is you and I both admit that these this election fraud bit is a fantasy that there's no evidence to back this up, but you're saying I should implement voter ID laws to help make the people that think that the fantasy is reality feel better. And I'm saying I shouldn't. Do you think that's a fair summation? Yeah. Well, yeah, pretty much. Cause you know, like it happened in 2016, it happened in 2020 as well. You know, both sides are kind of guilty of pointing out these conspiracies that, you know, both elections were stolen, essentially, which neither of them were. Oh, I don't see either side. No, there's a big difference between ballots versus somebody saying there was propaganda and, and money influence. Those those are two huge different things to me, right? If we're talking about propaganda, that's one thing. Yeah. If we're talking about actually fraudulently filling out ballots and submitting them into the system to be counted, those are two entirely different things. Oh, no, of course, but... I I'm, I'm guess I'm talking to there, there were certain people on the Democratic side that were saying that the Russians stole the election. Yeah, but we're talking the Russians at, came in and stole the election. Yeah, but when they're saying that, they're saying the Russians like you know ran advertising essentially that was targeted at you know fake information. That's not mm -hmm. the same thing as you know hey I filled out a bunch of fake ballots and dumped them in a box, right? We're talking about two totally different oh, things okay. here. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. Okay. I just wanted I to clarify that. I'm going to give you the last <laughs> bit, and then I've got to wrap up the show, but I appreciate you calling in. Yeah, man, no problem. Any final words? No, thanks for having me, man. Uh, good conversation. You know, we, we obviously agree on a lot, but disagree on one thing. <laughs> yeah, I tend to agree with you. Thank you for calling in, man. You're more than welcome to call back anytime. I greatly appreciate it. Have a good one. Yes, sir. Take it easy.